taught ballet most of my adult life from um, about 1970 onwards, I think. And I only gave up a couple of years ago. Dance yields a sense of transcendence, takes us out of ourselves. It directs our attention to all the dimensions of life, which perhaps I think can't be expressed in any other way. It's exhilarating. I mean, what's exhilarating about a lot of theology? Absolutely nothing. But here's something which a resurrection body <laughs> might enjoy. <laughs> Let's capture the story of you getting this letter and what, oh. this, what this represents. Oh gosh. The Queen has an honours list twice a year. And I never paid any attention to it. And as it happened, I get this letter from her one morning. The Prime Minister has asked me to submit your name to the Queen with a recommendation that Her Majesty may be graciously pleased to prove that you'll be appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire. Professor Anne Lowe's for services to theology. Only two people have been awarded a CBE for services to theology, one man and one woman. And the one woman's me, <laughs> for what that's worth. The world's very complex and very difficult, and there are really profoundly important connections between what we believe and how we actually conduct our lives. Not just our private lives, but the wider social context in which we all live. There were very few women employed in universities when I got my, my job. And you just have to put up with some of the clergy being abominably rude. I used to go to Senate wearing a, a, not a black gown, but a, a bright scarlet quilted jacket, so that um, if I wanted to say something, I knew damn well that the Vice Chancellor would see me if I stuck my arm in the air. I suppose I just learned that I might as well get my voice and my opinions heard, because nobody else was going to say it, probably. And they didn't. <laughs> How has the pursuit of theology with all the gender politics influenced your own connection to God? Well, I mean, there were clearly huge deficits. You have to realize I was a loner. I wasn't part of a web, a network of any kind. So if I walked out on the church, it was going to be a hard row somewhere, and I didn't know where. But you had two choices, really. Either you said the hell with it all, or you hung in and tried to find why it was that people of all kinds, ages, shapes and sizes, including lots of women, had in fact found their resources within the Christian religious tradition. You wrote, the Christian tradition is in its own way responsible for the devaluation of women, and that that tradition, however, nevertheless contains resources for its own transformation. Uh, what are those resources? Um, well, things like the language of human persons being made in the image of God, actually paying attention to the actual lives of women who are in many contexts incredibly resourceful and constructive and cooperative and helpful to one another and to all sorts of other people. But if you, if you stick with the view that women are dim-witted, stupid, not worth educating, not worth, worth paying attention to, and therefore all necessarily subordinate to men, you're not going to get very far. You have to have different kinds of expectations and work your theology, it seems to me, from, from that. Theology isn't something that floats about in the blue. Theology is embodied it ought to be at the forefront of revisioning expectations, hopes. I was born in 1938. 
I was sent away to boarding school, as a lot of other children were. The crucial thing was to get children out of the range of bombing and damage. We were very poor. We put cardboard in our shoes so you could still get around. We look back on it now and it really was pretty atrocious, except that a lot of people now are living and working in simply intolerable conditions. And I would like to express the view that this is not how things have to be and help people to see what's going on and why it matters and what's important and what you might possibly do about it, not just in your own interests, but in the interests of other people. But you don't get change and you don't get wrongs righted, as it were, unless you basically stick your neck out, even if somebody's going to chop your head off. People say silly things like, all things work together for those who love God. Well, no, they don't. Not all the time. Um, the question is whether there's something beyond the immediate misery, a kind of hope, a possibility that's still to be found. But it certainly won't be easy, and it won't be at the cost of honesty about just how dreadful it is. Did Christ rise from the dead? Do, was Christ raised from the dead is the correct way of uh, doing this. And if one can make any sense of um, Christ's resurrection at all, um, it has something to do with um, God's blessing beyond all, everything we can I Im imagine. Um, and you might get glimpses of it in all kinds of ways. I mean, I remember a few months ago looking up at the sky and seeing this absolutely glorious sunset and thinking, well, in a sense, you know, at some point or other I could be part of that. And that might be enough. It doesn't have to be me clothed in bones <laughs> uh, um, and, and uh, old legs and feet anymore. It could be something much more, much more enticing, if you like. Well done, good and faithful servants. Enter now into the joy of your Lord. The earth is yours, and you shall command the eagles, you shall laugh at Leviathan, you shall be made glad with the grape and the wheat. Nothing at all shall offend you. You shall praise God with the holy and glorious flesh. The sea is yours, and the waters with the voice of the dropping rain. O lute and harp, awake. Rivers shall not drown love, nor the floods overwhelm it. You shall be poured out with the cataract, ride the tide, run with the stream. Beauty shall mould and hold you. You shall praise God with a searching and subtle brain. The fire mounts up to God beyond the angels of the spheres, whose strings are tuned too deep and high for mortal ears. You shall possess that music. You shall go secure among the mysteries, the sun shall harm you not by day, nor the moon by night. Your soul shall praise God, and your spirit shall fathom the depth and the height.